Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope that whenever, wherever you are on this big blue marble of ours that's hurtling through space, I hope that you're doing okay emotionally and that you are giving yourself timeouts <laughs> when you need to because the past two weeks, I mean, I'm sorry, past two days, not past two weeks, past two days, the Ascension symptoms have been absolute like foul moods, anger, short-tempered, short-sightedness about the future. Um, people have been reporting all over um, the internet just feeling just totally lackluster, no joy in any tasks, being really angry that they have to do anything at all um, <laughs> task-wise or work-wise and being really irritated, you know, annoyed. Um, I've seen it in people all around me, you know, in the past two days, uh, just being out walking around the mall. Um, people were not outwardly angry, but I could tell that people were just a little bit on edge, you know, like, just like, you know, <laughs> um, not everybody, but I saw it in a lot of people and I did see it, um, you know, comments written on various YouTube videos, uh, saying the same thing that just, you know, just, I, I have no joy, no desire to do anything. I really need a lot of alone time right now, <laughs> you know, hence time out. So give yourself space and grace and time outs when you need them. You know, uh, this is no easy task. What we're trying to do ascension wise. And this is no, it's not easy on us. It's not easy on us emotionally or physically. And if you find yourselves being snippety with your loved ones, <laughs> it's time for you to take a nap <laughs> or a time out, or at least, you know, just go to your respective corners and just kind of chill out. Another um, symptom that has come to my attention is being excessively thirsty. Everybody um, around me has been very, very, very thirsty. Just having, like, you just can't get enough water. Feeling super dehydrated, wanting to hydrate again and again. And so I've noticed that one um, in me. I have drank probably double the amount of water that I normally drink. Maybe triple, like today. Usually in a day, I'll have, like, maybe for a whole 24-hour period maybe four glasses of water, pretty big glasses of water. And then plus I have my coffee. I usually have, um, three cups to four cups of coffee per day. And then I'll have like two or three cups of tea. So that's normal. But lately I've been having like four glasses of water every two hours. <laughs> it's a little bit more than double, but it's not every hour like this, but you know, and like right now I'm like super thirsty and I just drank two glasses of water before I started the show. You know, it's just like, I feel like I can't get enough water. So make sure you're staying hydrated. Make sure that, um, you know, you're keeping your emotions in check. And if you're angry, just allow yourself to be angry. I'm, I find myself getting irritated at the fact that I try to ignore spiritual stuff. I try to watch TV or watch a show, not TV, TV, but you know, Netflix or whatever, or I watch documentaries and I just try to chill out, you know, cause that's what helps my mind to, Stop focusing on stuff that upset me, you know, or, um, brings anxiety. And I was, um, you know, I just keep trying to focus on other things, you know, trying to give myself that time out, you know, because I have so much, so many things on my mind. And that's one way that I'm able to, you know, if I play like a little video game on my phone, it helps me concentrate sometimes, you know, and it helps me focus my mind. And then I can think about my stuff while I'm doing that. I'm a really good multitasker, but I also have ADHD. So I have all this uh, in my mind all the time. And I found myself even being very snippety and, and, and angry for a couple days. Um, but today was, today I had like all kinds of anxiety, dude. Like, oh my God, I was sitting down to do my show 12 hours ago is when I sat down to do my show. 12 hours for reeking hours ago when the power just went out, no power, 
we didn't have power for like an hour. And then the power came on and we did not have internet for an hour after that. So about two o'clock was about the time that, um, finally everything started to work again. And then my son and I started talking about a few things and we got a little bit distracted and, and, um, I was just like, I'm going to play my game and kind of refocus my mind, kind of think about how am I going to do the show tonight and different things. And, um, all of a sudden my worst effing nightmare outside the window, there was a, a clown on a loudspeaker <laughs> selling chicken. <laughs> <laughs> red freaking nose, big fat floppy shoes that just freak me out. And like he had dyed his hair white or spray painted it white. And he had a white mustache and a white beard. And he looked so freaking creepy. And he had like a te- like tuxedo pants and suspenders. And his um, jacket was actually a pretty cool jacket. It, you know, looked like someone would wear it to a gay club, to nightclub to go dancing. But <laughs> it was like a white, bright white, like neon white jacket with almost looked like Keith Haring art on it. But I couldn't really tell. And I'm not going to get that close because to clowns, I just don't like clowns. I just don't freaking like clowns. They're scary as hell. Clowns are really really scary. I mean, they're like up there with cockroaches to me, like things that scare me. Right. And I'm allergic to cockroaches too. I lived in a building where they were, you know, there were, and when they uh, disintegrate and it gets in the air, um, it, 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 I have asthma and it affects me. I'm, I'm like allergic to it. And I have like, I could go into anaphylactic shock type of like that kind of deep allergy. And, um, so it's been, you know, but, but I just, but I almost go, I feel like I'm going to go to anaphylactic shock and I see a clown. I, I'm not, but I get so filled with anxiety and, and I was so scared. Like I wanted to go next door and get a couple things at the store and I just couldn't, I couldn't even leave the house. I was like this freaking clown. I didn't want to look at it. I don't want him looking at me at it. See, it's just like, to me, it's like a thing. Like, it's just so scary to me. I know it's a man in a suit or whatever. That freaking red nose. I, it was just so irritating to me. It was so irritating to me. <laughs> and he was screaming and yelling about chicken. And he kept saying words that weren't really what he was supposed to be saying. Like he was just like saying pizza with chicken. But he said pizza with a female anatomy part. He said coño instead of pollo. If you understand Spanish, you know how bad that is. (laughs) And he said, uh, like, instead of saying tacos al carbon, he said tacos al cabron. (laughs) It's like, instead of saying, um, you know, like, which carbon is kind of like, um, you know, to make food over carbon is like, like barbecue. So it's instead of saying, you know, barbecue chicken, he's saying, chicken of the assholes. <laughs> so, so it was kind of like a comedy clown show along with the advertising of the restaurant. And it was like, he was just, you know, yelling and yelling and yelling and yelling and yelling over this loudspeaker up until like, well, maybe like nine o'clock at night. So for freaking six hours, something like that. I mean, they sold a lot of chicken. They did a good job. It was their grand opening. I hope to freaking God the guy's not back tomorrow. The clown screaming, dude. Like, my son was like, you know what? He was like screaming about pizza and I want to get pizza, but I'm not going to buy it from a screaming clown. I'm like, yeah, hell no. Don't go near him and don't encourage him. Don't encourage clowns. Just don't freaking encourage freaking clowns. It was just really, really, really... That was really irritating me like all day long. And I'm like, oh my God, I sat down to do my show at noon and I thought I'd be done by three and start my weekend early. So now I'm irritated about that. 
But I also, now that I'm saying it, freaking Mercury retrograde, guys. I, I, I've i told you guys before, you know, this affects me. It affects the show. It affects when it comes out. This is one of the things. <laughs> you know, power goes out. The internet goes out. Freaking clowns are screaming everywhere. Like, for real, this is, like, one of the top most terrifying things that's happened since we've gone and lived in this apartment building. Number one, uh, the riots. Number two, the earthquakes. Number three, the damn clown screaming outside my window. I mean, I don't know. I'm starting to thinking. I'm starting to think that this is, like, a portal of some sort because my son lost something um, that he had he had sat down on the table and an hour later he had disappeared completely and there was like a shadow like an outline of the thing that he like sat on the table and it was in the exact same outline but it was like on the table so it's like an outline but it's like kind of a gooey wet like plasma <laughs> so the object that's missing is just a bunch of gooey plasma on the table now and no longer exists we tore this house up looking for it for like three, four hours. And we live in a really small apartment. So what the hell? And so I had to sit him down and tell him all the stories I told you guys last year. I forgot the name of the episode. I think it was like uh, something about things going missing or something. Um, <laughs> when, you know, just we live in a holographic universe and sometimes things freaking go missing. You know, like you guys, I read last week on the weird news about the lady who lost a ring in 40 years. She lost it in the United States and 40 years later was found buried nine inches underneath the surface of the earth in a forest in Finland. It was returned to her, the story of where, how we found it and where. And they had no connection to Finland. Like, how crazy is that? And, um, you know, just weird, uh, just weird stuff. You know, I lost a crystal when I was about 19 years old, and I found it six years ago in um, Guatemala on this person's table. He had like two or three crystals that my, my kids and I've had. We had this, we just were like, these are our freaking crystals. These are the rocks we left behind like nine months ago. And we were just really, like, overwhelmed. Like, I'm so upset. Like, how the hell? And that same day, I saw people walking down the street wearing um, two women side by side wearing outfits that I had in storage. And I saw my crystals. This is like six years ago. And I know that it was like four years ago, well, three years ago, that, that, that the storage unit sold my stuff. So now I'm thinking that they maybe lied about that and sold it six years ago. But how the hell did my stuff end up in Guatemala? It's creepy. We, have a, we live in a really freaking weird universe, you know? But when you have a crystal that you hold every day and you stare at every day and you see it in the sun and you see it in all different lighting and the way it fits in your hand and the energy of it and you know it's yours because you've had it for years and then it goes missing and then, you know, 30 years later you find it in another country and you hold it and it's the same exact energy. It's the same, the way it looked in the light, everything exactly the same. You know, this has happened to me again and again and again. I told my son, I go, you have to get used to it. We are a magical family where we have our hereditary magic. We're only now starting to be aware of it though. This year, this past year and a half is when we finally got, became aware of it. Like, oh man, no wonder all this crap has been happening my whole life. (laughs) No wonder that explains everything. You know, so we're, I'm like, we need to sit down and really start talking to the ancestors and learn from them directly. We have to hone our telepathic abilities and start writing down the books of shadows that were lost over the generations because there's information there about our abilities. <laughs> and he's, he, I mean, my son was upset for like three or four hours today. He's like, why? Why? You know, when you put something down, it's supposed to be there when you go back. He's so mad. He's like, this is not the way that the universe is supposed to work. This is not the way that physics happens. This is not scientific. This is not how reality is supposed to be. That I'm shaken. I'm shaken. I'm scared to the core. I'm terrified. I, and I sat him down and said, look, I have all these stories. 
you know, after the earthquake, my friend Lance had his toolbox with antique tools from his grandfather from generations back. And he had put it on his counter and he um, was going to start the repair after the 6.8 earthquake that we hit Northridge. He was going to, he was going to just start <sighs> getting his life back together. You know, he had a beer, had a bowl, <laughs> and he, all of a sudden turns around and his tools, his toolbox is gone. It's missing. I think he stepped out for lunch for an hour and it came back. It was gone. He went around berating everybody. Now, Lance is an ex-biker. <laughs> Like Hell's Angels type biker, right? He's one of my very, very good friends. Now he's a Christian, born again Christian. When that happened, we lost touch. (laughs) But he's one of the coolest people, really spiritual, was always very spiritual, very metaphysical, you know, when I was, you know, dating him for a while. And one of the coolest people in the world, sweet, kind-hearted, worked for a toy company for Christ's sake, right? Just, you know, (laughs) all around cool dude, you know? And, um, but he told me, he said, he just went around berating all the neighbors who broke into my apartment, who stole my tools. I will, I, he's like, oh, I will have your ass in a sling. Like he was so angry, right? And he went around telling everybody, <laughs> threatening everybody. You better tell me who did it. You better get that information to me. Right. And he was just like, screw it. I'm going to go get high again. He went and he smoked another bowl and he just sat and watched a movie, took a nap, woke up. And here's his toolbox. He freaked out. He called me. He's like, oh my God. That, I swear it wasn't there. Because I had plans to, I got it out of the garage, put it on my counter, and it was just gone. It was just gone. He's like, I don't know what the hell. (laughs) I was like, I don't know what the hell to do, but, um, (laughs) he's like, this just, he's like, this is crazy. It's crazy. You know, he's like, I guess the universe didn't want me to work on anything today. And the next day there was a really major aftershock and created more damage. And he's like, now I know why. See, the universe works in weird, wonderful, and mysterious ways. And when we get angry about it. We're not helping anybody. We're not helping ourselves. We're just, we have to understand the ways of the universe, the ways of God. It's, it's mysterious, right? So when things are not going your way, just, you know what, trust and make sure, Hey, look, you know what? It's annoying. (laughs) It's trust me. I get it. It's like super, super annoying, you know, and it's just been, I don't know. It's for me, it's been a last, the last three or four days have been very irritating like my light in my bathroom. It's like just a crap shoot if it turns on or not. It's on right now, but it's not. It's off. And I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just, it's like, <laughs> I don't even, I'm, I don't even want to look at it. It's like a, there's a sensor. It's a special, I don't even know what it is. It's it's a flat light. It's flat with flush with the ceiling. All the lights in my house are like this. And the guy that came here last time, he said, no, it's, the sensors, he said that, first of all, he said they were too expensive. Then he said, they're not, they don't exist anymore in Quank anymore. They don't even sell them because the lights are so old. So like when we lose the lights here, we just don't have lights anymore unless we buy lamps and we have a couple lamps, but it's really irritating. You know, when the landlord won't take care of it, we, what, we can't install new light fixtures. Really? The, I mean, the wires are the same, but, um, my bathroom light just, <laughs> It's like, you know, I have to keep the windows to my bedroom open, my door to the bathroom open. It's completely ridiculous. You know, even if I'm just going in there to wash my hands, it's like I've got to make sure everything is just the right angles of the doors open and the curtains open just so that it's been like super irritating like that around here. You know, like I'll keep the light on hoping by morning it'll be on. Usually by the morning it's on. And then sometime in the afternoon, either my son will be in there and accidentally shuts it off or I accidentally shut it off or, or it just shuts itself off randomly too. I was, you know, and then today everything was good. The light's on. I'm like, yes, I'm not going to touch it. Not going to touch it. Everything's going to be good. And then the power goes out. 
oh my god mercury retrograde guys it's just you know and, and maybe it's just the universe is testing all of us at once that's just a really crappy idea <laughs> but maybe it is maybe we're all being irritated on purpose at once with all these weird little annoying things like clowns and power going out and internet going off and all these delays 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 so many delays but today I looked up in the clouds and there were probably 10 faces over the span of like maybe 10 to 15 minutes and one of the faces was it looked like a 3d painting it was or you know like a third dimensional maybe like a sculpture you know or like a really good painting of a Spaniard a very high class like like with really nice clothes from like a thousand years ago and like really um high cheekbones and like a Clark Gable mustache and it was it was really like re- like a realistic drawing but in the clouds and it was like there for about a minute and then it dissipated it was really trippy lots of trippy clouds like that today you know, I saw cartoon faces and then I saw, you know, things like that look like, you know, fine art. And then I saw like goddess eyes. I saw a couple different goddesses take shape. And I told my son that I said, there's been a lot of weird things in the sky today. And then I saw S and J S and J or J S it was actually J S um, in the sky. And I thought that was strange J S. So what, I wonder what that is. What does that mean? So if that means anything to you guys, any one of you, If you're like, oh my God, it's my initials or whatever, (laughs) you know, or maybe it's initials of your true love. I don't know. I don't feel that it was for me. Usually when it's JD, I think that one's for me because when I ask about me, then it is, but this randomly appeared, I didn't ask for anything. So it might be somebody else around here. I think there's a lot of brujos around here because there's so many things that appear in the sky and it's like, I, I didn't ask anything. And then it appears and it's over certain houses. And I feel like that might be to do with that person and what they're wondering about. But I told this to my son and he said, Oh my God, I saw the trippiest thing today. I saw a devil in the clouds. The clouds formed in the shape of a devil with horns and a tail in a meditative posture and smiling with his eyes closed. Like the devil is taking a break and he's meditating, but the whole thing was upside down. And he was sitting on the pinnacle of a triangle or a pyramid. So basically it's like a triangle with a flat part up and the devil upside down. So he was like, it was, it was like, it was like art. Like someone had painted that, but it was in the clouds and very, very clear and just kind of hovered there for several minutes before dissipating and turning into another cloud or whatever. (laughs) I'm I'm telling you guys, I swear, if you, if you come to Ecuador, if any of you ever come to Ecuador, you come to Cuenca, if you just sit in the park and watch the clouds all day, I'm telling you, you're going to see the same stuff that we see. If you look for it, if you know, it's there, you know, it's there, you believe what we're saying and you look out there, you're going to be like, Oh my God, what the hell is going up with the, (laughs) what's going on these clouds? They're so strange. You know, and it's only since I hit the Amazon that I started to see things this trippy and this intense. Actually, that's not true. I actually, I noticed it for the first time in, in the Bay Area. I saw a bunch of demon clouds and it was the same demon over and over and over again. And it would start above the crystal meth lab like it was half a block from us. <laughs> the devil faces start about right over their lab and then it would float over our heads and it just would like over and over again with the same exact face and my roommate saw it and said hey I know I'm really high right now (laughs) but I want you to see this thing and see if you see it what do you see in the clouds I'm like oh it's a devil face that's weird oh look it's another devil face (laughs) that's weird and then all of a sudden the clouds start going super super fast and it was not like, oh, there's another one. And a few minutes later, oh, there's another one. It was more like, there's one, there's one. Oh my God, there's one, there's one, there's one. It was like that rapid devil face, devil face, devil face, devil face. And he said, you know what, dude? I think um, 
God's giving us signs. We're Muslims and God says in the Quran that he gives us signs to people who could see. And I'm getting the hell out of this neighborhood. And I go, I am too. Probably in a couple months though, not right now. And, um, and we did, we left. But, um, and he left like right away. He's like, I'm out of here. I am scared. And, and, and I said, I have to ask you something. Did you hear your name? He's like, what do you mean? And he got really freaked out. I'm like, yeah, I was out here alone at night in the yard. And someone said my full name, my first middle and last name. And it really freaked me out. And he's like, yeah, that actually happened to me too. I could, it sound like it was inside your head. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and it happened to both of my kids too. So I think that there was a lot of demons in that area and, um, they were trying to scare us and we left, you know, <laughs> it was like, I'm out of y'all. <laughs> but, but, um, then in the Caribbean, I saw the seven African deities. I talked about that when I talked about my voodoo, um, episode last year when we experienced um, being around the people who were voodoo practitioners in the Caribbean and Guatemala, but we didn't participate or actually witness any ceremonies, but we could, we saw the seven African deities. I, I said, I lit a candle that had the seven African deities on it. And I talked to them, the Orishas and they appeared in the clouds and it was like the cloud would be swirling in a circle and it'd be just like a normal circle. And then it'd turn around and be a face and it'd look at me and it would smile. And then it'd swirl in a circle and the face would turn around and look at me and smile, but it'd be a different face to so be like a man and then a woman and then a man, and then a woman. It was just like so crazy. Tons, tons of magic in, in Guatemala. I wonder what it feels like there now because there's more magic in the world now today than there was four years ago, six years ago. We're going to get more and more and more magic in the world and it's coming and I feel it. And I'm not the only one saying it. And there's a lot of people saying that. So as we rise up, as we uh, physically integrate into the fifth, I know I'm already there, but it doesn't mean you can't get irritated by the way. You can be irritated in the seventh dimension. You could be mad in heaven. It doesn't last long and you could resolve it quickly, but it still does happen. You know, I've gone to visit people in the seventh dimension that passed on people in my family and friends. And some of them are still irritated by stuff that happened on earth. Like, you know, like, or they feel bad about stuff so that they did or whatever. And they're still trying to get counseling and help for, uh, working, uh, that out. But, um, anyway, so magic is here. Magic is real. All the crap is about being in the matrix is just... You know, I don't know why we're purposely being irritated, but we are. We're going to talk about that today with the locust uh, issue. When we get to that, um, so much. We have about two pages and two or three stories on the third page. As far as uh, world news is concerned today. And so it gives me a couple extra... um, moments to share with you some stories about, um, some stories about the, uh, like news of the weird. (laughs) I like the weird news stuff. Anyway, seeing I'm distracted now, I'm like burning up. There's like extra energy and I feel it right now. So much cosmic radiation pouring in. It's just so hard for me to concentrate. All right. So anyway, current conditions, the solar wind speed is 451 0.9 0.9 kilometers per second, um, quite a bit faster than yesterday, which was 330 something. So it has, has fixed itself. There is a coronal hole that is allowing solar wind to pass through. It's going to be hitting us on March 2nd or March 3rd. So watch for that in just like what, three to four days now, uh, we will be hit with some solar winds that will definitely affect our emotions. We're still in the solar minimum, of course, because no sunspots, (laughs) completely blank sky for 26, or not sky, completely blank sun for 26 days now. So we're not really, when we have the sunspots, it puts out a magnetic field 
that protects the Earth when our own magnetic field isn't totally functioning. And it protects us from the cosmic radiation, but because, (laughs) for whatever reason, um, you know, because they're not having sunspots, you know, up there on the sun, (laughs) they, the spirits that run the sun, I'm assuming they're spirits running the sun. (laughs) In any event, the sun is just not, it's so strange. And um, my son and I had a conversation again today about we haven't been outside in four days during the sun being up because it's been absolutely raining, pouring down cats and dogs. Everybody gets a pet. (laughs) I call it the pet share program when it rains cats and cats and dogs. (laughs) Everyone gets an animal. It's like crazy. It's been absolutely raining, 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 raining. Of course, yeah, it was nice and sunny on that clown though. (sighs) Maybe God likes the people opening the pizza place. (laughs) Maybe they have good pizza. I don't know, but they were, they got a lot of orders. We'll see if people come back, though. We have another place doing chicken three doors down from the one that just opened. You know, and they're, they're only doing chicken. We ate there once, and it was really terrible food, and we never went back. I think my son did go back one time, and they had chicken, and he was just like, why did I trust it a second time? They're worse than the first. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know why they're still open. I really don't. I see people that are eating all the time, and I'm like, did they just give us like the crappiest food because we're new or we're not Ecuadorian or I don't think that's, you know, the vibe there, but I wasn't going to give them another chance. You know, it's just, yeah, you serve me yucky food. I'm out. I'm not coming back. But so hopefully these other people will do good and maybe we'll go down there and eat. Maybe if there's no damn clown, I'm not encouraging the effing clown, but, um, yeah, uh, we haven't been outside. In many, 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 many days, and suddenly my freckles are popping out on my face like I've been out in the sun a lot. My son has had freckles now on his shoulders and arms, across his chest and on his face, and he's like, Mom, I did not have freckles everywhere before, and suddenly I have freckles like I've been out in the sun for days. My friend Jordan, when I saw him yesterday, he was really, really tan. I mean, he's, he's a really tall Viking like dude. He's like, I don't know. What is he? Six, two, six, three, six, four. All of his brothers are big strapping fellows. They're huge people, but, um, <laughs> but you know, the beautiful blue eyes, blonde hair, and they get tan like so rapidly. And he looks like he's been in the sun for days as well. You know, but I think he did say he went hiking when it was sunny out for an hour or two. And where they live, they live on the top of the mountain. And I think it might not rain over there as much as this part of the city, which is weird. It just, it all depends on the topography. But, um, I don't know. Have you guys noticed that suddenly you have freckles, even though you haven't been out in the sun at all? Are you guys noticing that you're tannered? You're, you're like looking different like that way it's very very weird to me so we had nine fireballs uh recorded today over the past over the united states um cosmic radiation um ulu finland has recorded the neutron counts they remain very high the thermosphere climate index remains cold um yeah, and that's all I got there from spaceweather.com for you guys today. Now, the Schumann resonance was enormous yesterday from coming out of Italy. It was 170. It was a record for them, not a record of all the Schumann resonances everywhere. Um, so people are all over the internet going, Oh my gosh, the Schumann resonance. I'm sorry, guys. I get really mad when people say I was totally affected by the Shimon resonance because it was 170 yesterday. And that really bothers me because where the hell were you guys that are saying this seven days ago when the Shimon resonance in South Africa was 790 hertz frequency? And don't give me that crap about the Shimon resonance 
on the, on the disclosure website being, um, a conglomeration of all the numbers and being the median number. That's not true because I did the math on it yesterday and, or two days ago. And when it was like 10, (laughs) you know, then the other six numbers, when I took, you know, an average of the other six numbers was like 36. So when this disclosure says 10, that's not an average of all the numbers in the world. And when there's only seven numbers being monitored, I'm wondering, I mean, if we put a machine in every single country, if we put a machine in every single city, what numbers are we going to really get? You know, is the Schumann residence in that area due to the way that the neutrons are hitting or the solar wind or the gamma rays, or does it have anything to do with the crystals in the earth underneath the city? Does it have to do with uh, the politics and the way people are reacting to things going on in the city emotionally? Does it have to do with nuclear radiation or some other crazy stuff? Sonar? Does it have to do with um, magnetic arrays? Maybe it's not what we think. And maybe it's not affecting us. Maybe we're the ones affecting it. And I've been saying this all along. It's very possible. <clears throat> you know, so I get upset when people go, oh, well, I look at Disclosure News and I could just tell it was going to be high. But where are you living? Are you living in Italy? Then, then it will affect you, maybe. But, you know, like if you're in <clears throat> Hofuf and it tends to be like zero, then probably it's not affecting you. I mean, that would be affecting you in a different way, though. That's what I'm saying. So when people say they're being affected, yes, they probably are being affected. Absolutely. hundred percent. But they're not being affected by the Schumann residents in Italy when they live in Canada. <laughs> you know, it's like... You know, when you're in Canada, chances are it's double there what it is in Italy. You know, except for yesterday. Yesterday was the anomaly, and I thought that was pretty crazy. That was like the one time when it was like super, super high in in Italy, and I thought, well, let's go and check the other numbers, and then the other numbers were unavailable. <laughs> so looking at the other numbers yesterday from today's standpoint, I'm looking at this going, all the numbers were super low. What the hell is going on? It seems like when it's very low at disclosure news, it's very high everywhere else. When it's And then it's the opposite. When it's high at disclosure news, it's low everywhere else. Or did I just say that the same thing twice? I don't know. Anyway, but you know what I mean, the opposite. Anyway, disclosure news today, they're only reporting power 34. That's it. 34 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale. 34, that's it. And all the numbers have been below 100 except for what looks like either California or New Zealand. Let's see. Yeah, no, actually New Zealand. So only New Zealand has been above 100 since the 26th. So for, you know, three, two days, everything's been below 100. Um, on the heartmath.org except for New Zealand so <clears throat> let's see I'm trying to see what are the big numbers from yesterday because we missed it oh okay this is fun well that was Wednesday um, yeah we had actually Wednesday it said it was out and but it did record it so Wednesday at the 2100 hour mark California, Hafuf, Saudi Arabia and Hulului were all at 44 hertz frequency how weird is that they were all lining up at 44 and Northland, New Zealand was at 112 hertz frequency and Lithuania was at 100 hertz frequency Alberta, Canada at 64 That's really strange. That's a weird number. 
that that's some weird stuff going on. <clears throat> and yesterday on the 27th, it was just all, you know, just looking. The highest number was 103, and that's coming out of Lithuania. And the lowest number, like, at 25, it looks like. For, like, the whole day, like. No, I'm sorry. Actually, like, 30, looks like 36 was the lowest number for the whole day. So, I mean, even on the lowest day, um, it's still more than what it is in Italy right now. But, I don't know. All right. So, but for today, Friday, February 28th at midnight, California was at 30 Hertz frequency and at 5 a.m. they went down to 25. That's been low. It's been higher. So that's pretty low. A lot of these are now starting to go dipping down again. Um, Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, they were at midnight at 73 Hertz frequency. By 5 a.m., 66 hertz frequency. Strange master number there. (laughs) Uh, um, That's not Alberta. Lithuania started off at 81 hertz frequency at midnight. By 5 a.m., they were down to 76 hertz frequency. In Alberta, Canada, they started off at 45 hertz frequency at midnight. By 5 a.m., they were down to 37 hertz frequency. And... Northland, New Zealand, nice round number at 44. Again, yes, another master number, another 44. 44 hertz frequency at midnight, and by 5 a.m., guess what? Still at 44 hertz. That's it. Now, Halului, South Africa, the one that just a week and a half ago, they were at 790 hertz frequency, and then on the 20. Between the 23rd and 24th, they went up to 550 hertz frequency. Those are massive numbers. So I get mad when people start going, it's the highest it's ever been at 170. And it's like, you guys, I all the people that are reporting that, by the way, I have been on their websites and said, you need to check heartmath.org because the numbers are generally higher around the world compared to what number you're reporting. So... I mean, and I might be wrong saying that 790 is the highest I've seen. It, it might There might be other cities that have it even higher that I'm not aware of. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. Don't go around saying this, especially when someone's told you repeatedly. Like this one woman, Siobhan, I, I deleted her and unsubscribed after I told her like three or four times, uh, you're not checking all of the information you're giving out false information and then she did a video on how people made her sad and, and I think it was directed at me and I was like dude I wasn't trying to make you sad I was trying to make you see though that you're that you're um, not giving out correct information to people and you don't want to lead false you know false ascension false light don't do it you know I'm just looking at the numbers I'm not going to tell you guys this is going to affect you you know I don't know what it does are you affecting it? Maybe your high vibration is raising the vibration of the planet. Very, very possible, guys. It's very possible. So anyway, um, you know, scientists say it's potentially having an effect, but they don't really even know either. So you can't come along as a new agey person going, oh, it's definitely affecting me. You know, really? Because seven days ago when it was 790 hertz, I don't know, was it affecting you then? Because I don't see any video from when it was 790 in Africa. And as far as I'm concerned, I think you live in the United States or Canada. And you're pretty much the same distance away from Italy as from Africa, practically. Maybe a little bit farther from Africa, but 790, that seems that that would be definitely felt by the whole planet. (laughs) It just seems to me, I could be wrong, but I get really mad at, about that. It's like, you're being affected, but that's not what you're being affected by, you know? And I think she, I don't know if she's the one or this other, I think it was somebody else. She was saying her higher guidance said that you have to take in all the negative energy around you so that 
other people won't be affected by negative energy. It's like, no, <laughs> your higher guidance didn't say that, would never say that. It sounds like she had a spirit attachment or a demon and she got deleted and blocked right away. I'm like, oh God, no, it's like, I don't know. It's just. I don't know, when you haven't done the work at all in, you know, five minutes ago you hung up a shingle saying you're this and you're that on, on YouTube and it gives everyone else a bad name, especially people who've been doing this for decades, you know, like I've been doing this stuff for like 35 years and my, um, people I listen to, Shree and Kara, they've been doing this since the 1970s, almost 50 years. They've been on the ascension path for 50 years. You know what I mean? Like, and they don't go around saying, I felt the Shimon resonance and I knew it was super high. Like, you know, I don't know. It just, uh, it, I'm sorry, you guys, I keep harping on this. It does bug me so much though. But yeah, so Halulu, we went down to zero. That's crazy. Like totally the opposite direction of where they were two weeks ago we'll see where they end up. You know, I just, I want everyone to understand what they're feeling and where it comes from. Cause if you guys tell me you're feeling the energy symptoms and there's no solar flares, don't tell me it's from a solar flare. You know, it might be from the cosmic radiation directly. And there's so like, there's sonar that comes from different places we just found out the sun gives off radio waves. There's also, um, you know, the solar winds sometimes, not just solar flares or CMEs, but solar winds do affect us. They're coming in like three, four days again. Um, it's, you know, there's like so many different things. There's so many factors. And I could tell you, I feel energy right now. I don't know where it's coming from though. You know, I'm being really honest about that. I'm not going to lie and go, oh, I just know it's a Shimon Residence because it said it on a website. No. Do you really know that? Because I don't think you do. Like, I don't, I'm doubting that. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these people are only tuned into Italy, which is weird because the Shimon Residence is different in every place. That's like saying there was a snowstorm in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. No wonder I was freezing last night here in Ecuador, you know? <laughs> Or it's super, super hot in Australia. No wonder I felt so hot here in Ecuador. <laughs> like, to me, it's like the same thing. I just, I don't know. It bothers me a lot. I feel like you have to have a clearer picture. And we don't have a clear picture. Even if I'm telling you the seven Schumann residences around the world, it's still not a clear picture of every single city, every single country. I don't know. If any of you are mechanical and you want to set this up in your area... I mean, I will announce your numbers on the show every night. We'll just keep adding cities. I, I don't mind doing that. Not even one itty bitty problem with that. If you guys want to set it up, I will give you play and I'll say, hey, go to this website, <laughs> check the numbers here because in that city, this is what it is. You know, I bet that the Schumann residence is different in Los Angeles than it is in Las Vegas. It might even be wildly fluctuating different. From Southern California to Northern California might be wildly different. So you might be affected by the Schumann residence, absolutely 100%. Maybe the Schumann residence in your city. Not the one halfway around the world. Anyway, sorry. I've harped on this so many times. I'm sorry about that, guys. All right. We're on lesson 244 in A Course in Miracles. Um, the Foundation for Inner Peace website is at acim.org. So, lesson 244 is I am in danger nowhere in the world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. Your son is safe wherever he may be, for you are there with him. He need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. How can he fear or doubt or fail to know he cannot suffer, be endangered, or experience unhappiness 
where he belongs to you, beloved and loving, in the safety of your fatherly embrace. And there we are in truth. No storms can come into the hollowed haven of our home. In God we are secure. For what can come to threaten God himself or make him afraid what will forever be a part of him? I am in danger nowhere in the world. Oh my God, you guys. So just like always, I'm always really loving when what I read from this lesson, the way it lines up with um, what I'm going to do for the evening. I mean, this is Earth Changes Day. (laughs) That's a perfect affirmation for everyone in the world. We have about a little bit more than two pages worth of news today. So when we started doing this a couple months ago, we would have four pages a day or four pages every Friday. So the good news is that even though there's some really screwed up things going on in the world, they're actually less of them, (laughs) at least less reported on this website. And if she's keeping up with the same workload, you know, as before, and it looks like she is, but we'll see, you know, it's, she doesn't talk about political news. So it's just earth changes and, you know, space weather type of news. So, Oh goodness. I'm getting so tired again, really sleepy again. I just spent hours being irritated that there was a clown. I'm not mad at him because he's kind of cute, but <laughs> like, ah, <laughs> delays. It's like so irritating to me. All right. So I guess I'll start reading. Let me ask my higher guy. Should I start reading today's news on back? the beginning news until now. Okay. So I'm going to go back to like the very end page, like from a week ago or six days ago and read all the news until the current news. So the oldest news first, first in, first out FIFO. I don't know if you guys ever took computer science in high school. That's what I learned. (laughs) Garbage in, garbage out and first in, first out. That's what I learned. All right. Um, So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to get into the Earth Changes news. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Before we get into that, I'm going to try to eke it out on this section. Okay, coronavirus, guys. We are going to talk about the coronavirus because all these cities are going, yeah, we're going to declare a state of emergency. So we have the money, the funds in the bank. The minute it hits, we're going to just take care of this virus. And oh, my God. They're hyping it up. They're constantly talking about it. They're like, it's so bad. It's the worst. Da da da. There's going to be a second outbreak. Oh my God. They're building hospitals. They're, you're, you know, they're freaking out over this. Now, when I first started reporting on the coronavirus, like what, a month ago, six weeks ago, the, the death rate was 19%. It might've been even like 21%. And then quickly went down to 19%. That was huge. We were like, oh my God, out of the closed cases, 19% of people died. Oh my God. We were kind of freaking out about this, right? Because we knew those numbers could rise and it was getting really freaking sketchy. And then after like a month, we realized that no one outside of China was dying. Now, a couple people outside of China have died. A lot more in the past week. But not that many. Because guess what? Right now, there have been a total of 85,206 coronavirus cases. Out of that, there's only been 2,923 deaths. And we've had 39,448 people recover. Okay? And there's still 42,000 active cases. So guess what, guys? When I first started reporting this, I think it was like 21% death rate. Right now... With the closed cases, with an outcome, 7% have died only. Only 7%. That means it came down 14%. People are not dying from this like they were. 
okay? So don't panic. There were only 47 new deaths in China last week. I think I reported like 98 deaths in, the, in one day. Today was only 47. Six people have died on the Diamond Princess, 705 cases on that ship right now. Active cases right now, 689. Ten people have recovered already from that cruise ship off the coast of Japan. So, you know, a lot more people died in a lot more places, okay? We're saying 16 people in South Korea, 21 in Italy, 6 from the Diamond Princess, 34 in Iran, 5 in Japan, 2 in Hong Kong, 2 in France, 1 in Taiwan, and those are the only deaths. Oh, I'm sorry, Philippines had one person die, and that's it. 7%, guys. It's not as bad as we think. Keep doing everything in your power. Go back to my how to prevent virus episode. Keep doing it guys, because you got to keep yourself good, diligent, boost your immune system, get the probiotics in your tummy. If you're vegan, go for the kombucha, baby, go for the sauerkraut. It's going to put the good bacteria there and you don't need to eat dairy. And if you're already sick, don't eat dairy anyway, because that's not going to make you feel better. But 7%, it's better than than what we thought originally. Even though everyone on the news are trying to hype it and create fear, I think the reptilians are feeding off our fear. Don't let the governments feed our fear to the reptilians. (laughs) You know? Just, Just, you know, screw the cabal. Look at the numbers on worldometers.info forward slash coronavirus and you'll see for yourself it's only 7% death so it's not as bad as it was 6 weeks ago everyone else is hyping up the negativity of it and I'm telling you guys right now stay safe you can do it, it's not as bad as you think alright you guys I'm going to take a quick break, when I come back we're going to get into the world changes news and we're going to have a little bit of time for Some news from Ripley's Believe It or Not, right after this message. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you and it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated and now I'm available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and many more and so can you. You can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement. You get paid from your very first listener. It is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So please, if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own, do not hesitate to start with Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Found 
find out the earth was sick. We knew we had to do something quick. The earth is a family and our friend. We need to mend it before it ends. This is our home, so don't destroy it. Everyone should do their bit. Ice caps melting, seas getting high. Homes will be flooded. Polar bears will die. in the sea it's like people use this planet as a bin pick up your trash that's where you begin temperature is rising we are realizing we must act now there's no compromise just one small change in the little things we do we'll show you how and now it's up to you it's our future it's our earth we need to protect it for what it's worth it's our future it's our earth we need guys so when I was looking at Skywatch Media News earlier um, at his more recent report he was talking about the locusts so when we get into the locust story here we're going to talk about that Um, it's like (laughs) really really bad with the locusts right now literally It's almost beyond biblical proportions. This is like the worst plague. So we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about... um, There's a rare phenomenon that occurs, supposedly, that over China, they saw five suns rise... Five suns, S-U-N-S, five suns rise in the sky. Boom. (laughs) One is a big baby face like Teletubbies. I'm just kidding. It wasn't. But the scientists had an explanation for it, saying it was like a, a, you know, uh, like a phantasm sun or something. I forgot the name of it now. But it, it, this video went viral because everyone was posting this like oh my god there's five suns in the sky what the actual hell right so uh, I don't know guys I've had a sun rise here and wake me up and then two hours later the sun was rising and woke me up again what the hell how, how did the sun wake me up and then wake me up how the sun rise at six and then again at eight or seven and again at eight, whatever it's happened here two or three times. And I've, I've noticed that sometimes when the sun rises, there's like the equivalent of two suns. It looks like two suns. And last week when the sun was setting in the West, like it's supposed to in the East, I saw two suns in the sky. And then I saw two other, like, so it's almost like five, you know, like five suns, but the one that was setting and then four other ones looked like they were setting in the east, which was very odd. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Optical illusion, spaceships. I don't know what it is. Holograms. 
giant light bulbs in the sky. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's very, very weird. And it, you can go look at this on Skywatch Media News YouTube channel. He does an excellent job of reporting. I, I really love listening to his his stuff. He's got a great voice too. My God, really good radio voice. Anyway, um, he was talking about this locust thing that is going on. And as I'm saying this, I feel something crawling on my eye and I keep touching my eye and there's nothing there. <sighs> okay. Higher self started being in my room. No, no one here. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I just have the heebie-jeebies from the locusts because I watched a locust video. Also, the clown outside. <laughs> He's gone now, but... Ugh, clowns. Alright, so there have been massive swarms of locusts invading throughout the Middle East and Africa. In fact, according to Skywatch Media News, 20 million people are facing a potential food crisis. They're having food scares right now because all of the crops are being eaten by these bugs that are for some reason not dispersing after a couple days and for some reason are suddenly um, multiplying rapidly. And they're headed next towards China. In Kenya, Africa, the swarms were so bad that it blackened the sky and turned it like night in the middle of the day. And it's the worst locust storm that they had had in, I mean, swarm. (laughs) It's like a storm, but it's a swarm of these insects and they're huge. They're like five or six inches long in some cases and they have wings and they're creepy. They're like grasshoppers, but creepier. And they, in Kenya, they said it was the worst locust outbreak that they've had in over 70 years. It's huge. It's huge. It's horrible news because where are they going to eat now? You know, their food's gone unless they've had food in storage. A lot of people might starve to death. It's very, very sad. Um, The swarm in Saudi Arabia was confirmed to be the one that came from East Africa. So they're saying for them in Saudi Arabia, again, biggest outbreak that they've had in many de- decades. Um, countries in the Horn of Africa struggled with this. And then they flew over to Saudi Arabia and apparently now, and this was on the 22nd of February, it was reported like, you know, almost a week ago, six days ago. So basically they're headed towards China (laughs) with all the crap going on in China right now. (laughs) Oh my God, it's starting. And, And I told you guys last year, my higher guidance said, look, um, Expect that a lot of people are going to be leaving the planet. As we're moving into the fifth dimension, up to a third of the people are probably going to go. So don't be surprised when it happens because we've already talked about this. You know, like, and, and when I was asking the questions, is it going to be here in South America? Where is it going to be? And the answers I kept getting was uh, Asia and Africa. That's what I kept getting. Not happy about it. It's just what I was getting my, from my higher guidance. So, you know, I, I don't know. We just All we could do is just send love and light to them, right? Love and light and imagine the food. Uh, having them have, you know, them having plenty to eat. So, in Argentina, in several provinces in the north... They had incessant heavy rains and it continued um, to batter Argentina, affected lots of people. A hundred, more than a hundred families had to be evacuated 
due to the flooding. So we're going to hear about flooding a lot now. Um, we even had floods here for a few minutes every day over the past four days. The rivers are swollen. They're not breaching the banks, the breaching the banks here yet. Usually they don't. We have four rivers in this city. I love it. I love this city. Not only do I have four rivers, we have little side rivers, little teeny tiny creeks that become rivers when we have a lot of rain like this. And so when I open up my window, I hear it. I hear the river really loud. Lots of rushing water. So, um, let's see here. We have this story I want to read to you called Rare Weather Phenomenon, St. Elmo's Fire, captured by hurricane hunting plane over the North Atlantic. This was so incredible. I heard about it, obviously, in the movie St. Elmo's Fire when I was a teenager. My sister and I went with our parents. Actually, I don't think our parents went. I think they wanted to see a different movie, and so they dropped us off at St. Elmo's Fire, and, and then they went to a different movie. So my sister and I watched Rob Lowe and he was our heartthrob baby. <laughs> Rob Lowe was it back then. Okay. But we loved St. Elmo's fire. It was a really good, you know, um, everyone. We liked everybody. I mean, Emilio, I think Estefan was in it and Demi Moore. Oh, we loved her very much. Anyway, um, So St. Elmo's Fire, a crew aboard an aircraft used for hunting hurricanes, captured a rare spectacular weather phenomenon called St. Elmo's Fire while they were flying over the North Atlantic Ocean on February 15th. So they were part of the uh, Ocean Winds Research Project, and they were made making the flight to... um, Look, as a storm Dennis was approaching Ireland and the United Kingdom. So that's what they were doing out there. They were trying to collect the data. And they witnessed what looked like lightning strikes, but it was a discharge of the atmospheric electricity that was actually called St. Elmo's Fire. Luminous plasma generated between the clouds and the ground in the vicinity of a thunderstorm's electrical field will cause this rare weather phenomenon and it rips the molecules apart in a process known as ionization. So St. Elmo's fire produces audible as well as visual effects that are like lightning and thunder, and it's a crackling noise that can occur along with the blue and the white glowing streaks in the sky. And the difference between the weather events, though, is that St. Elmo's fire is basically a glow of electrons in the air while lightning is the movement of electricity from one charged cloud to the ground. So while St. Elmo's fire is not necessarily dangerous, it will be a sign oftentimes that thunderstorms are coming. They're on their way. So this is a phenomenon that has occurred throughout human history. Before um, airplanes reported it, um, it had happened on ships in the ocean open. I mean, ocean open. Open ocean. Oh my God. Can't believe I said that wrong. So basically, the, the sailors knew about St. Elmo's fire before planes existed. They say it, it happens when the charge of an object is much different than the charge of the air. And unlike lightning, when huge bolts of electricity jump across a large distance from one charge to another, St. Elmo's fire tends to happen on a very small scale. And the phenomenon is named after St. Erasmus of Formia, who was the patron saint of sailors. So, I thought that was pretty cool. There are videos of this. If you want to go to watchers.news, you can go check out these videos. Now, when you look at the way that lightning is, then you look the way this is, this is weird, and it reminded me of the way that the patterns are, you know, of, it's like disbursement of electricity in all different, or the ionization in all different directions, and it looks like a synapse in the brain, or the veining of the outside of a big head of cauliflower 
it's the same kind of a pattern. And then there was a third example I came up with why, what this looks like. Um, now I can't think of it, but I mean the cabbage, that's what it looks like, you know, like, like a leaf pattern or, you know, on a cabbage. It's weird. So go check it out. It's, it's really interesting. It's different than anything I've ever seen. I heard about it in the movie and I just thought, well, it's kind of like the stuff of legends or something, right? But it's, it's pretty cool, you know? So if you guys want to check it out, there are videos available. (laughs) There was a shallow 5.7 and a shallow 6.0 earthquake that hit the Iran Turkey border. Nine people passed from this. It claimed nine people's lives. Uh, 37 people were injured and nine of those were seriously injured. But the depth of the earthquakes were only four miles and then 6.2 miles. Not very uh, deep. So uh, remember, shallow earthquakes tend to hit harder, you know, on the surface. So pretty crazy stuff. All right. Uh, There's a study by Harvard astronomers that suggest that there could be small meteors up to four inches that travel close to the speed of light as soon as they hit the Earth's atmosphere. And they are the result of super super nova or novae that are nearby us and they speed up, I guess they shove the rocks our way and gets caught in our atmosphere. And they think now that these little meteors are traveling speed of light. I thought that was cool. Hurricane Harvey. I just finished watching. I finally watched the very last episode of Suits because the season was, you know, I mean, the series is over and I was just going to cry too hard if I binge watched it and then got to the last one. So I, I put it off, put it off, put it off just yesterday. Watched the very last one. And it's a tearjerker, and it's wonderful. They wrap up everything neatly. I liked it. It was really cool. Um, very sad, though, that Rachel wasn't on the show. You know, uh, now that she was a princess who just renounced her title. <laughs> but it was it was, uh, it was, was good. If you haven't seen it, if you never watch Suits ever, oh, my God, watch the whole series. It's amazing. <laughs> if you like law- lawyer dramas, but it's... A lot of funny, a lot of funny to it. And towards the end, a lot of heart. Like, they all grew emotionally. The characters really uh, grew as people. And it, it, it was awesome. Anyway, so I'm like, Hurricane Harvey, aw. I think about Harvey Specter. <laughs> anyway, this uh, hurricane tops the list of the decade's most extreme United States weather events. Oh, my God. Um so crazy. So, and then they're just talking about, if you want to read the whole article again, it's watchers.news. The St. Elmo's fire uh, video, by the way, is on page three. By the time you hear this, if it's in a few days, it might be page four or even page five, depending on how much news has happened. So, um, you might have to hunt for it, but it's worth it. It's really cool. Um, in Northern Australia, tropical cyclone Esther hit and there's been another uh, storm that has been intensifying off of the coast. It says WA. I don't know. I only know that is Washington. I don't know if that's what they mean or not. Let's see. It was in Queensland in the Northern Territory Category 1 system on Monday. So if you're in Australia, you've already heard about it. If you're not, you know. Send them sunshine to Australia. Send them sunshine to Argentina. The storm um, sustained winds near uh, 37 miles an hour. The gusts up to 59 miles an hour. So that's that's nothing to laugh at. Pretty strong cyclone there. Uh, violent mud flows and raging flash floods have hit southern Peru. 
nonstop intense downpour triggered violent mud flows and basically brought the death toll to nine. We're going to hear that a lot. I have read the words death toll at nine, claim the lives of nine, the number nine. We're going to hear that a lot tonight. I have a feeling. There were red warnings for heavy rains, thunderstorms, and strong winds for Peru. So let's send them sunshine. It's funny because, like, the parts of Peru that get rain, like, they get so much rain every year. It's massive flooding. And the parts that don't get rain haven't had rain in, like, hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's like we're, like, the Nazca. They just never, ever, ever get rain. And in Lima, it rained for... I would have to say about five minutes and I was there for 18 months. (laughs) You know how hard it is when it's really misty and the air is really thick and dense and you're right on the ocean and you feel like any minute it's just a cloud's going to come forth and burst and you just, you just don't get it there. You get a lot of fog. You get a lot of white skies. You have a lot of days of just pure white skies because there's overcast, but there's not really a lot of cloud activity like here there's not a lot of there's no rain like none if it rains for five minutes people start to freak out because they don't know how to drive in it it's like weird I mean I think there hadn't been a rainstorm there in like 50 years when I was there it's a desert (laughs) straight up you know it's it's Lima's Lima's crazy place It's not as hot as you'd think it would be, but it does get pretty hot in the summer. And it does get really cold in the winter, but right on the ocean. It's a cool city. I like it, but I I prefer prefer where I live now. All right, short-lived earthquake swarm was beneath the Rapehu volcano in New Zealand. And they now say that the sequence seems to be over, but they're at level one alert. You know, it could be... It could erupt eventually, but the last eruption was in 2007, so it's been 13 years. There's that number 13. In the beginning of the week, we're talking about that. A flash flood uh, swept 249 students who were on a school trip in Java Islands, Yogyakarta region in Indonesia. Ten were confirmed dead. 23 treated for injuries, but the flash flood came and just swept them away. 249 students, but only 10 died. So what a crazy story that is. So let's just send love and healing there. Massive sandstorm hits the Canary Islands and authorities describe it as the worst in 40 years. The winds were up to 75 miles per hour over the weekend, last weekend, and the storm caused severe disruptions and exacerbated wildfires, and this forced 2,000 people, residents living there, to evacuate. So, I don't know, storm of sand and wind, what do we send those people Love and light and calm, tranquility energy, maybe. Swollen rivers strand residents in Samoa after a heavy rain dumped uh, a lot of rain by tropical cyclone Wasi. It caused the rivers to overflow over the weekend and no significant damage reported. Some rivers and roads remained flooded on Monday, but it doesn't look like anyone died, so that's cool. Send Let's send lots of love and sunshine to uh, Samoa as well as to Egypt and South Africa. Severe storms wreaked havoc in Quaz- KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, and they had a flash flooding. It killed one woman. Disaster management teams were deployed in affected areas. After the reports of torn rooftops, uprooted trees, and basically swept away cars. So, that's crazy. It's so much flooding. Heavy rains hit Egypt, caused severe flooding and major traffic disruptions in Cairo. Oh, I got people over there in Cairo. I should probably 
right, I'm going to ask if they're okay. Cause major traffic disruptions. And all of the classes and schools had to be uh, suspended. And that even includes, that happened also in Alexandria, Egypt as well. Now in Mexico, there was a very large explosion of the Popocatapetl volcano. It spewed ash up to 26,000 feet above sea level. That's 7.9 kilometers for people that are not in the United States, as the rest of the world uses metric system. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Uh, I don't know. There's not much to say about that other than the volcano exploded, probably. There's no one living near it. In, in Mexico, they're very active volcanoes. This one is weird. Um, a blizzard buried a village in southeast Turkey under six meters. That's 20 feet of snow and it left dozens of people isolated a powerful blizzard buried a whole village oh my god 20 feet of snow in southeastern Turkey and 70 other villages were left isolated Uh, residents of the city of Yuksekova were left without power and water And they had to struggle to uh, dig out. That's huge. I remember in Minnesota when I was a kid having 10 foot drifts in my driveway going, I I was just like in shock. It was huge. It was huge. 20 feet. I can't even imagine that. I literally cannot imagine 20 feet of snow everywhere. In California, we got a dump of snow that was man well walking on top of it and I fell to the bottom of it and I was up to my upper waist I'd have to say four feet of snow and it happened overnight I mean that was crazy but I 20 feet five times more than that wow hard for me to it's hard for me to imagine so uh yeah A lot of people are worried about the pandemic of the coronavirus. There's an article about that. Obviously, you know, they're worried because it's possible. But the the thing is, though, it's it's affecting all of the stock markets and the markets. Our stock market in the U.S. is going down. Um, It's it's uh, South Korea and Italy are like the second and third most deaths. Still, they're very low. It's like, you know, just not that many compared, but. It's at 7% death rate. It's not as bad as it looks. You know? Let's think positive. Send, you know, thoughts of maybe copper energy. I don't know. Copper kills germs. It's colloidal silver as well. A complex winter storm has uh, impacted the a large portion of the Midwest through the Great Lakes on into northern New England in the United States. Uh, this is was from four days ago, so I'm sure that it's already happened uh, where it dumped heavy snow, generated gusty winds. Um, so I'm sure if you're in the U S it's already happened. Stay warm. Let's send sunshine to everybody in the Eastern half of the U S a uh, 5.9 earthquake hits near the coast of Yamdena Island in Indonesia. So, Yet another one. Uh, let's see. It was it had a depth of 38 miles. It's a shallow one, but not as much as the other ones we were mentioning. So researchers use gravity signals to improve earthquake early warning systems. That's interesting. Um, they want to be able to predict earthquakes uh, with great accuracy. So. They have proposed a new algorithm that will describe the gravitational signal. So that's good for the early warning systems, I guess. So I don't know. Um, Also, this will not only predict earthquakes, but also tsunamis in the future because earthquakes send out signals that can be measured and read with the right equipment. So that's pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm just not reading the full article, guys. If you, any of these articles tickle your fancy and you feel like you want to learn more, 
just go to watchers.news and you can read them, you know, in greater depth and detail, by the way. <laughs> so a severe thunderstorm and the worst hail storm since 2010 has wreaked havoc across Perth in Australia. The winds were up to 78 miles per hour with ferocious thunderstorms. Oh my God, the hailstones were the size of tennis balls. Oh my God. Two inches in diameter. That's huge. And that lashed Perth, wreaking havoc across the city and causing chaos during peak hour traffic. Oh my God. And isn't that during (laughs) um, Mercury retrograde (laughs) as well? Mercury retrograde, there's always problems with traffic and travel, but it doesn't really cause the hail storms, but that's crazy. We even had hail here today just for about five minutes. It wasn't as cool as the last time. The last time the, the hail was the size of peas, <laughs> um, maybe a little bit bigger than peas, like double the size of, you know, canned peas. Very weird. Uh, Emergency was declared in Indonesia's West Java as widespread floods and landslides displaced roughly 10,000 people. And uh, so I guess we're sending them also to Australia and Indonesia. Send them love and light and sunshine. 13 people are dead after severe thunderstorms striked struck stroke <laughs> I guess struck is a word in Bihar India 13 again there's that number 13 heavy rains with hail and lightning lashed different parts of the state and this picture is beautiful it's like a purple sky with lightning coming down the lightning's kind of a pinkish purple color my God, I, I don't know. I guess it's, is it really, I guess they had heavy rains with hail and lightning. So I, don't know, I guess people died from the hail as well as maybe being hit by the lightning, but crazy stuff. Um, in the great Sitkin volcano in Alaska, they've had increased earthquake activity. So they're keeping you know, a yellow alert advisory just to be careful if you live in Alaska that that volcano might be getting ready and speaking of volcanoes, there were 20 active volcanoes in the past week four were brand new, the other ones were ongoing activity so 20 it's a little bit more than last week China launches its first AI earthquake monitoring system. That's good. They definitely need it. So it's artificial intelligence. That's pretty interesting. So it's their the first tracking earthquake tracking system. So uh, widespread flooding hit central region of Malawi, including the capital Lilongwe. And that was torrential rains on Monday led to widespread flooding. Um, and the police locally uh, reported four fatalities due to the weather-related incidents. Wow, it's tons of water in this picture. And brown, so it's probably like dirt roads and then the flooding just picks up the road and takes it with it. Um... Researchers from MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, have developed a system that could identify the best possible method to deflect an asteroid long before the situation becomes worse. That sounds very interesting. The asteroid deflection campaigns. Wow. I don't want to read it right now, but if you guys want to read that, Watchers.news. You could go check it out. It's on the first page. A massive glacier collapsed and there was a catastrophic mud flow near Machu Picchu in Peru. 
Wow, there was a catastrophic debris flow, claimed the lives of four people, and left 13 others missing. 13 again. Weird. It's so weird, right? Now, this is fun. A rare back to back or rare back to back fireballs light up the Arizona sky and the Southwest United States. <laughs> so. They received 64 reports about the meteor from the American Meteor Society. So, but they had more than one. That's pretty cool. I I can't even see the rest of the article without going there. And I want to give you guys some weird news because weird news is always fun. That looks interesting. I might actually go back and read that one if we have time. A powerful winter storm pounding parts of the Northeast and Great Lakes and heavy lake effect snow expected Um, throughout southeastern Canada they said heavy snow gusty winds and all that it looks pretty snowy and bleak in this picture it's beautiful though Um, I talked to you guys about the second mini moon already Earth. we have another mini we have a mini me moon (laughs) it's like 5 by 11 uh 22 people are dead or missing following severe flash floods and landslides in uh, central northern Colombia. So 14 are missing. Um, Eight people have died, so the numbers are a little bit off there. (laughs) It's not 9 and 13 like all the other articles. Weird, right? They have an orange alert out for uh, the mudslides in the affected area, so... Let's send sunshine to Colombia. I love Colombia. The Colombianos that I met, really awesome, beautiful people. Uh, really sweet. Open-minded, too. And intelligent. I can't say enough about the people there. Now, there are a lot of criminals, granted. Not the safest country, but I really enjoyed being there, honestly. So, in the uh, Canary Islands, we talked earlier about the sandstorm. It had a heavy impact on all the crops there. So they're expecting that the damages will be long-term. The uh, next crops are at risk and all the current harvests have been lost. So let's send prayers and I guess abundance of the, the earth to Canary Islands as well as if you can send actual food there, if they, there must be some rescue effort, you know, over there. If you have feel it in your heart to do so, spectacular daylight fireball explodes over northern Croatia, and they say that meteorites are likely. So, if you live in Croatia and you're hearing this, you might want to go meteorite hunting because they're really worth a lot of money, <laughs> and plus they're kind of special. So they basically said this event was witnessed from all over Croatia, Slovenia, and parts of northern Italy, and was followed by a sonic boom and even registered by the seismographs as an earthquake. So that's pretty cool. Seeing fireballs in the daytime, that's not scary at all. (laughs) a widespread, widespread, I said now I can't talk anymore. Widespread flooding has persisted in Ireland and the United Kingdom. And another strong storm is expected to hit Western Europe this weekend. Oh my gosh, batten down the hatches, guys. Just looks like another bumpy one. Um, there were some evacuations in Ireland. Prolonged heavy rain. In I you know UK and Ireland both, um, lots of warnings and alerts, and the conditions are expected to worsen. And this is news that just is coming down today. So over the weekend, man, if you live in the UK or Ireland, I'm sorry guys, you're not going to get to rest and drink your pints of Guinness. I'm saying that because I'm jealous. I love Guinness, but uh, yeah, just be careful. Be careful out there, guys. Let's send sunshine and love to 
Ireland and the people of the UK as well. All right, so I'm going to read you something. We're now at the very end of the month of love, (laughs) Valentine's Day month. (laughs) You guys, this was the weirdest article from mirror.co.uk. Basically, the the, uh, mirror, this is what they wrote. Women proposing on Leap Day is believed to date back to the 5th century and an Irish nun called St. Bridget. Sick of women having to wait around for their man to pull their act together and propose, she lobbied St. Patrick to allow women to do it instead. And she was successful. Ish. He gave her one day every four years. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Crazy. Um... (laughs) <laughs> but it said that the agreement was considered a huge win and women were handed control once every 1,461 days. The tradition goes that St. Patrick weaved in a small requirement in the terms and conditions designed to warn men who were not keen on getting to the altar anytime soon of what may be about to happen. Rules state that women had to wear breeches that's pants in modern language, or a scarlet petticoat if they were planning on producing a ring. This was to give men advance notice if they wanted to leg it. (laughs) Meaning run away. Uh, Interestingly, though, a survey of 2,700 people by Love Honey found that more than a quarter of the women said that they would definitely propose on a leap year. And by the way, guys, that's tomorrow. So if your man hasn't, you know, gotten around to it, propose to him tomorrow. But you got to wear pants or a red coat to warn him (laughs) that you're coming to ask him a question. (laughs) It's so crazy. (laughs) Oh, it's really, really crazy. Um... More than a third thought the whole idea was outdated and sexist, right? (laughs) But 48% were actually happy with the tradition. Two-thirds of those who asked said they would be happy to be proposed on two on leap year day. So, hey, what are you waiting for? You want to take a leap of love? Tomorrow is the day to do it. It is it is super outdated and very sexist. Like, come on, anyone can ask anybody anything. But it's kind of a cute story and kind of a cute tradition. And I wanted to continue with the stories about love and love-ish. Um, now, next we go to Ripley's Believe It or Not at ripleys.com. Weird news for the week. Married in hell. (laughs) Some couples-to-be might want to avoid getting married on leap day for fear of getting a wedding anniversary only once every four years. 21 couples, however, don't just want to get married on leap day, but also they want to get married in hell. (laughs) The town of Hell, Michigan, is conducting the ceremonies for free. I think there's a satanic catch. What do you think? (laughs) As the local Reverend Yvonne Williams notes, there's nowhere to go but up when you get married in hell. (laughs) When I first read that, I didn't know it was in Michigan. I've only been to hell, Nevada. (laughs) My kids and I were like, oh my God, we've been to hell and back. (laughs) Like, because we drove through hell to get to Las Vegas, (laughs) which is Sin City. (laughs) And then we, and then we drove back and I'm like, yep, we've been to hell and back. Literally. (laughs) So this is really strange. Uh, 
When residents spotted a bald eagle in distress in Bowles Gap, Tennessee, they called in the wildlife rescue workers to assist the American icon. The bird could not seem to fly as officers approached the scene and they caught the eagle. But upon careful inspection, the officer saw no injury and determined that the eagle could not fly because it was too fat. <laughs> oh, the overweight bird gorged itself to the point, I, I think they mean point, <laughs> of being grounded. The workers relocated it to a safe area to digest its meal. <laughs> Poor baby. But you know what? As above, so below. And this is the icon of America, and it's a fat, bald eagle. Just look at the president on down. I mean, you know, I, 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 so many jokes, so little time. <laughs> this was a very weird one. Smell something, say something. Uh, that's not how I heard it, but this is how it goes. A mysterious and putrid stench <laughs> has wafted into Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Some describe the scent as sulfur. Huh, speaking of hell. And some are afraid to smoke for fear that it's a gas leak. Officials have been trying to identify the source for months, but their investigations have turned up few clues. Now, agencies from three states have formed a joint task force to track down the scent. Oh my God, you guys know what that, that uh, reminds me of? Do you, If you guys have ever seen the Gilmore Girls... <laughs> And they're getting ready to have the flower festival. And all of a sudden, the whole town starts smelling with the worst smell ever. And they're like, oh my God, what is that smell? And then they realized, oh, there's like a dozen Easter eggs that were never found. And they were rotting. <laughs> oh, right before the flower festival. And they're like, this will be a laughing stock. We can't have a flower festival if the town smells like rotting eggs. So they had to have a, a late year Easter egg hunt. <laughs> and now I mean, it makes me wonder about Pennsylvania if they did not collect all of their Easter eggs. The Hungry Duckling. As swarms of locusts continue to decimate farmland across Pakistan. See, that one wasn't even mentioned in the other news, right? The Chinese government has offered to deploy upwards of 100,000 ducks to satiate their appetites on the destructive insects. Agricultural experts say that one single duck can eat upwards of 200 locusts a day and they can be more effective than traditional pesticides. I mean, that's, that's crazy absolutely crazy so what I heard on Skywatch Media News guys is that there are six an estimated six billion locusts headed towards China six billion I, there's, it doesn't seem like there's enough ducks in the world I mean they can rapidly breed and they rapidly eat they do everything quickly I don't know. Let's just send a uh, love and light to all the people in all the places. Because, you know, it, it's getting serious out there, man. We don't have as many earth changes to report as before, but what we are reporting, it's, it's pretty real, man. It's getting real. Bible was real. Who knew? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, they had locust swarms back then. You know, it's, something's happened for a very long time. But the fact that it's so many countries and so many insects and so much more dire than it has been in seventy years. I mean, I don't even know what to do about that. Just send love and light and calm. Ask God to get rid of the insects already. Send birds. 
flocks and flocks of wild ducks. I guess when people are done with all the crops because they've been eaten by the insects and the ducks have eaten all the insects, then everyone can eat duck until the next crops come in, I guess. (laughs) Poor ducks. Oh, man. It's a crazy, crazy... Crazy set of stories tonight, right? Lots of flooding, lots of snow. But that, I mean, that 20 foot dump of snow, that's, that one, the one was crazy. That was a, that was a crazy story in Turkey. So I don't know, guys, the best we can do is just try to send love and light around the world. I know I do. Even on days I have irritating clowns outside my window. (laughs) I, uh... I, it's all I could do. I just send love and light. I don't know what else to do. Ask God to help the people. If they must transition, let's pray that the people that have to go get, um, they have a very smooth and easy transition and that they can adjust on the other side really quickly. You could just ask, you know, say prayers for people in that situation if you want. So anyway, that's it guys. I, I gotta go. I, I'm gonna take my I gotta go to bed and start my weekend tomorrow. Yay. (laughs) I want you guys to set your alarms for the 1st of July when you could go to the podcast awards, people's choice awards for the podcast community and vote for me. My hat is already in the ring, but the voting doesn't start till the 1st of July. So you might have to put in your Google calendar or your iCalendar. You know, just give yourself a little note to don't forget to vote for Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. (laughs) So, yeah, there's that. I'm tired, guys. I'm really tired. It's just, it's been a crazy fast few weeks or fast few days. It feels like I crammed a couple weeks into five days, but it feels like it went super fast. I don't know about you guys, but it really just went fast. So I'm hoping... Time will slow down, inshallah, as God allows it. I'm hoping we will have a lot of time on Saturday and Sunday to relax. And then we'll come back on Monday with all unique and original programming, just like always. Monday, of course, will be another installment of The Spirit's Book by Alain Kardec. We'll just keep going every Monday until we've read the whole book through. Pretty cool, that. It's probably a book that I would have been interested in and then after a few days not read the whole thing. Just read a couple chapters and then just go, eh, all right. But now that I'm reading it to you guys, you know, I'm more and more curious and I'm not going to give up on reading it. So it's kind of cool for me to just, I get easily bored or distracted and you know, lately when I try to read. So it's kind of neat. I get to read it to you guys. And that way I have it, (laughs) have it recorded. And also you guys get a book on tape with my hilarious comments. Usually they're funny. Sometimes they're angry at the sexism, but not too much sexism, but when it happens, it bugs me. But anyway, I will be back on Monday with all that. And, um, well, there you have it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening, liking, subscribing, forwarding, sharing with all of your people, especially the newly awakened and awakening ones. And thank you for sharing with all your Facebook groups and your Instagram and Twitter followers, because the more we get the word out about the show, the more I can continue to do the show. You know, I I need to be able to support myself by October with this. And right now, I'm lucky if I make $100 a month with the listeners I have. And that's a good start. It's a good seed money. But I need you guys to share it with 10 people at least. (laughs) If we get the word out, then I can support myself. Because every time you guys listen to the show, I make about a penny. But you don't have to pay anything. It's free for you but it does help me quite a bit. And I'm so grateful for that, that little bit of help. Um, 
I just, I just want to be able to share this with the world for the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, maybe the rest of my life. You know, that's my ultimate goal is to be able to just, you know, be here for you guys, especially during the awakening. And once we're all in the fifth dimension and then we could just share amazing Ascension stories with each other. I think that would be awesome. So mark it on the calendar, July 1st. You know, if you put me as, if you say, yeah, hey, I'm going to nominate this podcast for the award, um, that will get the word out as well. So yay. And then, you know, it'll be our award, not just mine. It would just it'd be all of ours because I'm doing this for you guys. Anyway, um... That's all I gotta say. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend tomorrow. Remember to take a leap. Something amazing, something fun, something you don't normally do. Take a leap in your life. Call someone you've been afraid to talk to. Maybe you're shy, but you want to ask them on a date. If that's the case, leap, baby. If you've been wanting to get married and your guy's not proposing and you're a woman, go ask him. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're two women, two men, a man and a woman. You know what? Just go ask your sweetie tomorrow. Take a leap. <laughs> Propose the next step. Whether it's moving in together or going study or getting married or having a baby or adopting a baby, <laughs> moving to a better house. Take a leap. Put your resumes out to jobs that will earn you double the money than what you're making now. Take a leap. Why not? Worst thing that can happen is you stay in the same job. Best thing that can happen is your whole life can change and things can be a whole lot better, right? Just take a leap tomorrow. And if you did take a leap, let me know what happened and and, uh, write me and I'll put it on the air. Anyway, that's it, guys. I I gotta go and that's all I gotta say about that. I love you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm signing off now with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys. Peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.